Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, it's kind of an Ask Judy. I'm going to cover a few different things, a few questions, a few upcoming things going on in my life, and just uh, a little bit of an overall catch-up. So, I hope you enjoy. First off, regarding the Waltons' 50th. At this point, there's no official news. We don't have anything specifically planned for the 50th. There's no big gathering. We're not doing anything at the museum with all of the cast. Um, I know a number of the cast are going to be in Missouri at the beginning of October for the Fall Pickers Festival or something like that market. Um, I'm not able to make it. Um, I have uh, a long-standing um, trip that was planned months and months ago before I knew this event was happening. So I'm sorry to miss seeing all of you and spending some time with my Walton castmates, but um, Mary and John and Eric and Cammy and Rachel uh, Longacre and um, Leslie Winston are all going to be there. And I've posted, um, there's going to be a photo uh, that they sent out to me and to David that we signed as part of a, a big group photo. So I know I posted it on my uh, Facebook page and I think a few others did too. So if you can make it, you can get the rest of the cast to sign it there. Or if you just want to order it in advance or afterwards, um, you, can, um, you can do that. Um, and everyone who's there will also be signing copies of it. So that's, um, that's a 50th news update. There's also going to be something coming up uh, next year, which is not really our 50th, but maybe part of still the airing of the 50th, um, the first season, um, there's going to be a, a an event up in Canada. Uh, for those of you who are in the Northeast, it'll be somewhere, I think, like Niagara-on-the-Lake, so we'll be posting more information about that. It's part of a, a um, sort of a tour, um, starting in Toronto and going around parts of um, Ontario, Canada. So the some of the Walton cast, me and Cami and Eric and Mary, will all be part um, participating in some events for the first three or four days of that um, tour group, and then we'll be having a public event, I believe, on the last day that we're up there. And then the tour will continue on for a few other cities. So we'll be posting more information about that. <laughs> so these are all kind of fiftieth uh, things that are happening. In other news on my front, as I mentioned, I won't be at the Fall Pickers event because I'm going away on a trip. Um, I recently mentioned that my husband and I celebrated our 20th anniversary. So we had, in conjunction with the 20th, planned a trip to France. So I will be gone for the first couple of weeks of October. So uh, if I've posted, if I've got uh, segments like this together in advance, there might be some segments that still uh go live during the time I'm gone, or there might not be. It just depends on what kind of ability I have to function from out of the country. And uh, But I can pretty much guarantee I won't be available to be answering comments during those first couple of weeks. So if you see an episode and you have a comment, um, I don't know how, if I'll have a chance to get back to those two weeks worth of comments, I get hundreds of comments a day. So it takes me a fair bit to stay up on them. But um, so don't take it personally if you don't hear from me um, in the first couple of weeks of October. And I will try and pick things back up then once I'm back. So I'm going to keep repeating this message so people don't go, where did she go? And why isn't she posting? So first two weeks of October, Judy is on vacation. Another thing coming up in the near future is I'm just wrapping up a Christmas CD. I think I've mentioned that a couple times. I'm gonna, um, I took a little bit of uh, video when I was in the recording studio, so I'll be sharing some little snippets of that with you. Uh, it was just, I took my camera and I threw it on a tripod, so I don't know. <laughs> I haven't even looked back at it yet, but um, I may share a little bit of that. Um, and then I will again be sending, putting out information about the CD when it's available. Uh, most likely it'll, um, around the beginning of November, it'll start being available. Um, if you want a copy, if you want to order a copy for someone for Christmas, um, they'll probably be available 
digitally as well as if you want hard copies. Hard copies of any of my stuff, photos, CDs are always available on my website, judynorton.com. And anything that's ordered through my website, I do sign personally. So if you order a picture or a CD and you want it to marry, let me know. Otherwise, um, I just sign it to whoever ordered it. So if you want it for somebody else as a gift, you'd have to let me know that in the special instructions. So stay tuned for more information about my Christmas CD. I am so excited about it because I've wanted to do a Christmas CD forever. And I just, during COVID, I went, you know what? This is the time. I have I have time to do this. So it's been a, it's been a couple of years in the making, but we're getting close. And I absolutely love Christmas, love Christmas songs. So I just picked a lot of my favorites to share. So more information on that will also be forthcoming. As you know, I recently spent some time, sat down with um, Rachel Longacre, which was so lovely. We haven't had a chance to really sit down and talk as adults, um, particularly. Uh, so that was a real treat, um, getting to know her a little bit more as, a, as both adults now. Um, so there were some things that we talked about that um, I didn't have time to add into the segment with her, so I thought I'd add a few other little things. We talked about um, interesting actor things, like when you're short and you have to stand on apple boxes uh, to be uh, to fix the height differential in scenes. So we talked about things like that. We talked about um, different things that happen during casting and, and things like that. So I'm going to uh, share with you what, uh, what we talked about uh, on that particular topic. I remember that. No, I think when I was first cast, we were, I mean, Cammie was always taller than I was. Yeah, I mean, she wasn't a lot taller. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Which is probably good yeah. because otherwise they may have said, well, it doesn't look right together. Exactly. People don't realize all the reasons we lose jobs. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Totally. Yeah. No, I, I remember on the show, I always had to be put up on an Apple box, oh. you know, for my, for my close up or my, you know, yeah. behind, behind the so camera, I always had to be put up on an apple box. For people who don't know what an apple box is. Yes, it's yes. It's like a plywood box and they come in different heights from a quarter to a half to a full. Foot, mm -hmm. And they'll put actors on them so that they can bring, get more height proximity so that the camera isn't like shooting from way low up onto somebody's close up. Or if two people are together, there isn't so much height difference that the camera can't frame tightly. Um, exactly. I, it would happen to me working with some of the taller, like Richard Gilliland, who played Jonesy. Yeah. Was like over six foot. And when right. I was wearing sneakers and he was, and we were standing up next to each other, I mm -hmm. like came up to you know, like his shoulder. Right. Um, so I would frequently, if we were standing, they'd put me up on. Yeah. The top of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yes, us, us shorter people tend to get elevated a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the taller people end up like hunting right. down on leaning against things to kind of bring that height together. Right. Did you used to, did you used to go watch the dailies? Because I think I only got invited once or twice and I was just like, ah. no, and I was we kind never, of, and I, we were never invited. I think once or twice, well, same thing. I was invited to see dailies, but yeah. more or less, I always heard that they didn't want actors. They didn't like to have actors there because for one thing, the director liked to be able to comment freely about stuff I'm sure. and I'm sure choices and you know and if they would were to say well that wasn't a very good take or exactly a little, a little overacted there I mean whatever they might say they wanted the 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 security and the confidence of of that not going outside the room which is sure. which I appreciate and I think I used I used to hear that they there was the fear that if actors went to dailies they would change things in their performance because after seeing themselves they might get ideas that they should do things differently and so i don't i don't know what it was but i think there was also just the time factor because they did it during lunch and it was sure. our lunch hour and i think they didn't want to have to pay to feed us <laughs> totally and totally. could you imagine all of the cast yeah. sitting in dailies <laughs> we didn't we didn't get to go to table reads either they just had the adult cast we were never That's invited. Right. To reads. Yeah. Um, so I think again, especially when we were under age, um, that it just wasn't practical. And sure. then I think again, it was probably too much to consider having 11 people at a table read 
it would Absolutely. you had to get through it you didn't have a lot of time you had to get through it and you, i get it i think our notes would have been valid for our characters sure. but they may not have always kept the whole perspective of what oh yeah the bigger picture was oh and yeah i would have i would not have thought that at the time yeah yeah but looking back i recognize that and think it was the right decision on their part yeah I would have liked to have perhaps been engaged more in some of the casting. Sure. A couple times I was, I was brought in. Uh, there was only two episodes I particularly remember when we cast GW Haynes originally. Mm -hmm. um, I was there. I was brought in to, to do those, some of those callbacks, I think. And then on, I think the episode, the medal, when um, mm -hmm. there's a soldier who comes to present a, a, a medal of honor or, or something like that to Kurt posthumously. Mm -hmm. And they brought me in for those callbacks, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but otherwise it either didn't work out with timing or casting or they figured didn't matter. But I was really quite surprised that they didn't bring me in when they cast, uh, Tom as Kurt, that they, you know, oh my gosh. My husband and they never, yeah, they never brought us into the room together. That is strange. Oh, that is yeah. strange. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily it all worked out great. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. again, they did a great job and they probably felt like they knew, you know, they knew my character well enough and they had enough of a sense of how the dynamics would play. So, and as an actor, it's, it's kind of like sometimes you work with, and I got along great with Tom. So, yeah. but sometimes you do end up in situations where you don't have a connection with an actor you're working with and you just have to use your imagination, <laughs> you know, you, you have to make it look. And I've heard all kinds of stories about films that I've watched where it's like, oh, those two didn't get along at all. And you'd never know it looking at the screen. Absolutely. You know, they Absolutely. had great, they, they, that's what actors do. They create on screen chemistry, even if they don't feel it. <laughs> Thank you for joining me for this segment of behind the scenes of the Waltons, a little bit of a catch up, a little more with Rachel. Uh, I will be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.